here we are in my front yard. This is where I'm gonna do my potager garden. So let me show you real quick the reason why I'm doing it this way. So this is my driveway and for some reason it like comes around this corner and makes this turn here but then just stops right there. So eventually I'm going to continue this driveway straight forward through this grass here and then through these cypress trees. I'm gonna take down a couple trees here, those two cypress trees in the middle right there and right there, and my driveway will go out that way. So I'll have a circle drive. So that's the plan. Um, and then this will be driveway. And then on this side here, I'm going to put bricks to separate the driveway from the potager garden. So anyway, here's the potager garden, this fountain was given to me by my neighbor that I love. She's so generous. Anyway, she gave me this gorgeous fountain, which I'm gonna use right here in the center of my potager garden, just like centered on my front doors. And then my potager garden will go around it. So now I'm going to start building the boxes with that leftover wood that I had from a different project that didn't come to fruition. So here we go. So the plan is for eventually the driveway will come across here. So that way when people drive around to my house, they can get out right here in front of the house. So this is all gonna be rocks around planter. I'm gonna use it as a planter. So I'm gonna put pea gravel all around here and then the raised beds are gonna go like that. And this end here is gonna be an angle so that you walk straight in and around into the front doors. That's the plan. So I kind of painted it out on the ground here with some of that paint. See, there's one line, there's the curved one, and there's that. So the way that I did it with that box is I cut that one six feet. That's the long one, six feet. This one here is five feet. That one there is three feet. And the reason why I did three feet is because I want to be able to reach the center of that garden bed easily from either side. If it was four feet, you'd have to actually step into the raised bed in order to get to the center to pull weeds and stuff and harvest. So made it three feet so it would be easily reached to the center for myself or my mother-in-law. Now this piece here, I'm going to have to figure that cut and at what angle I'm going to make those angle cuts. So that's the next step. So you see how that goes at an angle? And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side of the planter. That gives me a good four feet. I have to get off my arm. A good four feet from here over to the raised bed. So there's four feet walking space to get to the front door. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side of that fountain. Okay, I'm a little out of breath. So there's one done. And so the idea on the reason why I started to build these before even my ground was prepped is because this ground needs to be leveled off. This all, all this dirt really needs to go away and leveled because I want it all to be level with the sidewalk, but I don't really have any place for this to go. So what I'm gonna do is make the boxes and then dig the boxes into the ground and then all the dirt that's above that will go inside the boxes. So that's why I decided to just go ahead and start making the boxes before I had the ground leveled off. I'll show you a close up of how I did this box. So it's really, it's kind of janky, but it's gonna work. I cut the side pieces square, and then I did just this one piece angled because I just want to get it done. And I don't think it looks bad. So this piece, I did a 20 degree cut and that works perfect and it butts against that straight side and I think it looks fine and then of course those are butt joins down there butt join there that piece of wood got pretty warped but it's what I've got and it'll work so that's the way it's going to be so now I'm going to build that one and then I will level these off I'll start digging around these boxes all that dirt that's high will go inside and I'll level these off next one thing I want to point out is that if your board has a belly in it or a bow in it, like this one does, I don't know if you can see that, but it bows this way, you know, like this. So make sure you put it in the box like this. The uh, dirt is going to naturally push that out. So don't put your bow like this. It'll get worse. 
I did it wrong over there. So day two, I have this one last box to put together. I just need to screw in that end piece, waiting for my drill batteries to charge. Didn't charge them overnight. And I've got, and the one that we just crossed over is gonna go here. These three are pretty well leveled out and the ground around those two and this one is pretty leveled out. Once I get that box in, I'll get this ground all leveled out. And then I've got those two boxes over there sitting, but that ground is clearly all needs to be leveled. So that's where I'm gonna do now is start digging all this grass and dirt out and fill those boxes and level that up. Here we go, day two. You guys, I can't believe she's got a protege garden here. Look at how cute that is. This is, mm, I love it. Mine's not nearly this pretty. Love that. Here's what I see from my front door. Clearly I haven't started on my kitchen project. My pantry is still sitting in my foyer, but this is the way it looks from my front door. You can kind of see the fountain out there and the relationship of the potage garden to my house. So let's go out and take a look. Okay, so the first half of my video was recorded in July and it's now January 17th. So um, six months, more than six months later. So as you can see behind me, the potager garden has come along a little bit. So let me take in a little bit closer and show you. So as you can see, I put some pea gravel in around all the boxes. And then this area here is still mulch. But my plan is to rake all this out and level it up so that the ground is below the level of this sidewalk. And then I'm going to put the weed block here as well and do rocks in this area also. I'll use a mixture of pea gravel and larger like river rock in this area in order to just give it a little bit of a different different look but also have it just blend right on through here. And then also I want to mix in some big stones and I'll show you. I've got a few of them here but I need to buy a bunch more. Here's kind of what I'm talking about. I want to get some more stones like this. Um, round like river to kind of go around and just accent the boxes and then in this area here I put these rocks here now just to hold that pea gravel in and then once I rake all this out and I'll put rocks in all around this area and my lemon tree and may and then have some like big boulders in here too just to give it some architectural interest I'll probably trash that bike and of course get rid of that stack of wood there so this box here I've got um this is that there's ginger I've got a bunch of turmeric in the middle here this area right here I just planted some sweet 100 tomatoes waiting for those to sprout these the turmeric and the ginger I planted in July so these have been there a while so there's some pretty good uh, tubers under there and then of course I've got my color um, I mean my cabbage here which this one is already got a nice big head there got those that box there is all sweet potatoes and I planted those in July as well and they look terrible because we had a very cold weekend right at Christmas and so that pretty much killed off everything above the ground. I went in and amended that soil recently and there was a ton of tiny little sweet potatoes on the vines. So I just poked them back in the ground and I think I'm going to have a huge sweet potato harvest in the spring. This box here is that's beets and that's cauliflower. And this box here, I've got three different things in here. I think this is beets and, oh boy, I can't remember. And dummy me did not label them. I actually wrote on the box in chalk and then of course it got washed away. But I have some sprouts coming up. 
here. See, I've got a bunch of little sprouts coming up. And those guys, as soon as they come up, I'll probably remember. I actually kept the seed packets out so I know what it is, but. And then that's the view back towards that way. My driveway's a mess, carport's a mess. I've got tools and things all under there. So a lot of times I unload my car and drop things under the carport. And then there's my the brick that I was talking about. And I've got another plan for this, and I'll show you that shortly. There's my gorgeous fountain that I've planted. And I've got some sweet potato vine in there, and this, I believe it's called Chinese fringe, Laura Petalum, maybe, I think. And then I've got geraniums in there that kind of got froze off at Christmas time. And then in these two boxes, I just planted those and I've got a bunch of sprouts coming up in here. Can't quite remember what these are, but I've got a bunch of them coming up there. Got two different things in here, something there and something different there, can't remember. I've got some carrots here. I planted more carrot seeds here and then green onion on that side. And then I need to still continue the rocks all along the front of the house down the brick path I'm going to put weed block of course on that area there too and then rocks all the way up to the house and then that of course needs to go to my compost pile so I'll give you a view so this is the way my plan for the outside here is I'm going to replace these windows, this window here and that window over there. So they'll be taller and the, the width will be exactly the same width, but they'll be taller so that it'll give it that more English cottage look. And then the window on my kitchen, I talked about that in my last video, that I'm going to replace as well. And those are also taller windows. So once my windows are in, then I can paint my brick. And I've had the paint for probably four years. I bought a bucket of Roma Bio masonry paint from Home Depot at a deep discount. It was, I, I don't know what they charge for a five gallon bucket, but I got it for $125. It was on clearance. Somebody had probably bought it and then returned it because they don't even sell it in the store. It's special order through the store, but it was returned. So I came across it. It's called Avorio White, which is the color that everybody uses on their brick. And I'm super stoked about that. So once I get my windows in, then I'm going to paint the whole outside of the house, which I'm super excited about. That's why my house has been sitting in this ugly 70s brick for so long, because I need to replace the windows first. I probably should have just painted it and then done the windows and then repainted it, but live and learn. The, the bedroom windows will look like once they're replaced. This is the way my, oh, I wanted to show you, talk about one more thing here. So after I did this and I put these brick here, which I picked up all these bricks up from somebody on Facebook Marketplace for free. They were just getting rid of them. So I went and loaded them up and they had a whole bunch more and I should have got them, but it's one of those things. I just got enough for what I needed to do. And anyway, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna build a knee wall right here because this is gonna be driveway probably about 18 inches all the way down and I'm gonna make it uh, wide enough so that I can cap it with a brick this way so that you can sit here and what that will do is separate the driveway from the potager garden and because it'll be about this high it will block the view of these boxes from the road so it'll just clean up the front look of my house um, make it look neater and tidy and also lend to the English cottage feel that I'm hoping to achieve with the painted brick and the window replacement. So it'll be 18 inches all the way down and then once I get down here I will either curve the wall up. I'd love to do like a curve up to a higher point here with a light on top or I might just make like a a pillar and then the brick wall comes straight into it that's probably what I'll end up doing because it'll be easier but yeah so I'll, I'll dead end it I'll put a like a pillar here which will be maybe about this high and potentially a light on top of it and then this will be open so that you can get let out right here and walk around and then another pillar here with another light on top of it and that will just clean up this area It'll cover the boxes, 
so that with a knee wall you'll just see the tops of my plants in here and it'll just be so pretty. My potager garden. It's not as good as the Magnolia potager garden in Waco, but maybe one day I'll get there. It's a work in progress, clearly. So I will keep you posted and I'll update you once I have everything in bloom and do my knee wall and put the rocks here and over there and show you how it's looking in a few months, maybe this spring or this summer. 